If you want to update your home on a budget, you might be surprised what you can make with thrift store finds. Hey there, it's Christina from the DIYMommy.com. If you think a little bit outside of the box, you can go to the thrift store, find some treasures, upcycle them a little bit, and turn them into high-end looking decor items for your home. So let's go thrift store shopping, we'll do some DIYing, and create some beautiful DIY decor. Let's get started. I'm heading to Value Village. I just donated some items so I have a coupon and I'm ready to shop. The first thing I'm finding is this spoon rack, which I've used these before in DIY, so I might pick this up and make something out of this. I'm also seeing this shadow box frame. It's only $8 and it looks brand new. So this is a potential DIY material as well. And this vase is so cute for $6. I love the texture and the color. I would probably just keep this one as is if I did grab this. These chairs I think are also a great find for $15 each. I love the carving on them. There's actually a set of four. And in the kitchenware section, I'm loving this lemon topped jar. Don't know what I'd use this for, but it could potentially be something. And of course, I love a good wooden bowl and I could use this one as is or maybe give it a sanding. This brass candle holder is gorgeous. If it was Christmas time, maybe I would snatch this up, but maybe I should buy it in advance and use it for later in the season. I also like the texture of this pot. It's only $3.50, so this could be something that would be fun to play with. Now let's go back to my studio and see what I grabbed, and I'm gonna DIY some things. I did get this shadow box frame. I thought it was such a good deal. It's completely brand new, and I love it exactly as it is with this black frame. It's $8, and these are around $30 or $40 Canadian here at Michael's. I had these faux florals on hand, but you can also find them at your dollar store. And I'm just choosing three of my favorite bundles in colors that coordinate, so whites and yellows, and arranging them inside of this shadow box frame. I'm using some baker's twine and just wrapping it around the base of the stems just to give them a more realistic look. I've seen botanical shadow boxes similar to this on Pinterest. I will leave a link to the inspiration that I found in the description box below. So I wanna create sort of a similar botanical piece of art. Now I'm using my glue gun and just placing a dab of hot glue on the back of each of these bundles and adhering it to the inside of my shadow box frame. Now I'm taking some scrap paper that I had on hand and I'm writing down the names of these florals. I don't know if these are the correct names. I just kind of found what I think these flowers look like online, wrote them out on this paper, and now I'm gluing this paper near the flowers. I think this is such a pretty look, especially for spring. I'm finishing by wiping the frame down carefully and I'm gonna hang this in my living room. It's such a fresh, pretty, and unique piece of art for us to enjoy this spring. The next item I grabbed from the thrift store was this spoon rack. I have done jewelry holders from spoon racks in the past and I wanna do one again with a twist. I'm using Rust-Oleum chalked paint. I just had a little sample pot on hand and painting this whole thing. These would also be fun to spray paint or just keep them as is and just kind of touch them up. After the first coat has dried, I'm giving the spoon rack a second coat of chalk paint. And then now that this is dry, I'm just sanding all the edges. Essentially, I just wanna give it kind of a worn look, just wherever this piece would naturally get some wear and tear, and my sandpaper is 220 grit. I had these beautiful blue napkins on hand. I love this sort of blue and white floral look, and I'm just cutting out a couple of the motifs on this napkin. I'm removing the back layer just like this so that it's nice and thin, and I think I wanna put this either in the middle section or the bottom section of this spoon rack. 
I like how they look on the bottom two sections and again I'm just making sure I remove that back layer of the napkin. Now that I've decided I'm using these two motifs, I'm just taking my scissors once again and cutting a little bit closer to the design to make it look a little more detailed. Next I'm using some matte Mod Podge and I'm applying it to the spoon rack just like this and then I'm just gently smoothing the little napkin motif over top. So in retrospect, I wish I would have used a clear coat of polyurethane top coat rather than Mod Podge. You'll see later that the Mod Podge actually yellows a little bit. It's like the stain of the original spoon rack sort of seeps into the Mod Podge somehow. So if you are doing a similar DIY with a dark stained wood spoon rack and wanting to make it light or white, use a clear coat polycrylic. I will link one in the description box below. You can use it just like Mod Podge where you're just applying the layer onto the spoon rack, pressing the napkin down, but then just wait till that completely dries and then use one more clear coat of that polycrylic on top. If you do decide to use Mod Podge like I did here, you can Mod Podge the napkin down onto the spoon rack, and then even before it dries, use another coat of Mod Podge and just brush that on top, just like this. I had a little piece kind of rip off, but I'm just using my finger to carefully remove that piece. So as you can see, unfortunately mine yellowed quite a bit. I was pretty disappointed. So I would use some sort of clear top coat like this instead of Mod Podge if you have the light over dark. However, I'm gonna make the best of this and I'm just gonna take some more of that chalk style paint, a little bit of water and sort of whitewash over top of my whole design to get rid of some of that yellow. Because I wanna create sort of a French country piece, I'm not actually minding that little bit of yellow, and I think it's actually gonna turn out really pretty. So what I'm gonna use this for is a jewelry rack in my bedroom. I have made one of these in the past, and this one is a variation of that one. I'm taking a drill and drilling some holes in the top ridge of the spoon rack, and these are perfect to store hook earrings. I'm placing this on my wall, adding some earrings to the top and some necklaces to the bottom. I love how this looks French country inspired. It's really pretty for spring and it's a great place to store all of my necklaces and my earrings. Another thrift store piece I picked up was this textured vase. I'm giving it a nice wipe and making sure it's all clean. I wanna make a vase inspired by something I saw at Anthropology. So this is gonna be kind of funky, kind of trendy, but I'm excited to see how it's gonna turn out. These faux florals are from Dollar Tree and I'm just removing the flower part, taking some glue, putting the hot glue on the back of the flower and placing it onto the pot. I'm creating sort of a boho design and I'm also seeing a lot of iridescent things in home decor lately, so I want to make this pot look iridescent. I'm grabbing this pearl mist colored spray paint and when the flowers are all dry, I'm spray painting the whole vase. So this is taking three or four coats, I'm waiting a few hours in between each coat taking quite a long time to paint, but I think the result is really fun and funky. To continue this iridescent theme, I'm taking some white and sparkly florals and placing them inside this jar. This turned out so fun. I also picked up this lemon themed canister from the thrift store and I'm also cleaning this one as well. I'm placing a pot on my hot plate and then I'm placing a measuring cup inside to create a double boiler. In that I'm putting some soy wax flakes and I'm melting them carefully on my hot plate. Now that this is all melted I'm placing some scented oils inside, nice lemon scent, placing this wick in the bottom of the container and using hot glue to keep it in place, wrapping the top around a stick and then pouring my wax inside. This took about a night to fully cure and now that it's all dry, I'm just cutting that wick off 
and I have a beautiful lemon scented and lemon themed candle for my home this spring. This would also make a really sweet gift. It's not very expensive to make and it smells fantastic. I will link the scented oil that I used down in the description box below. This is perfect for spring or any time of year. Thanks so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed these DIY thrift store flips. Let me know down in the comments below which one was your favorite. I would love to know. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel for more DIY and decor ideas on a budget. And I'm wishing you joy in your home today and always. I'm gonna leave some more videos that I hope you will enjoy watching next right up here.